Now then, the gears on a bike can seem like a tricky and complicated concept to understand. And that is especially the case when we start to talk about gear ratios. So what are they? How do they work? And what do they mean for us when we're riding? So what exactly are the gears? Well, in the most simple terms, we've got the front gears and the rear gears, and they're commonly referred to as the chain set and the cassette respectively. So starting with the chain set, that's comprised of chain rings, crank set, and normally a derailleur, which will switch between the chain rings. Now, on most bikes, you'll find two chain rings, and that's referred to as a double. Some bikes, less common, but you may find three chain rings, and that's referred to as a triple. And increasingly more popular, we're finding one chain ring on some bikes, or people are opting to modify their bikes to have one chain ring, which does away with that front derailleur altogether, and that is called one by. Now that has been actually quite common in mountain biking for some time now, but it's still a relatively niche corner of the road cycling market. Okay, so let's delve into the chain rings quickly. So you will have likely noticed that they come in all different shapes and sizes, including obviously the two or three that you currently have on your bike. And they're differentiated by the number of teeth that they have. So for instance, on my bike, I have a 52 tooth bigger ring and a 36 tooth smaller ring. I'll explain a little bit more on why that is very shortly. Onto the cassette at the back, well that is made up of lots of individual cogs. Normally on most modern bikes you'll find that you have between 10 or 11 cogs but it can be as little as 8 cogs or as many as 12 on some bikes. And whilst we're talking about the cassette you may have heard people referring to gear choices as the highest or the lowest. And well, it is very confusing. I've got to be honest, this had me scratching my head a little bit when I first started riding bikes. So allow me to explain. The largest cog on your cassette, which is the one closest to the spokes, is actually your easiest gear and is often regarded as the lowest gear. Opposite end of that, the smallest cog, which is on the outside closest to the frame is actually your hardest gear and is often regarded as your highest gear. I know, I did say it was confusing. Now, as with the chain rings, the cassette does come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes with different number of teeth on each of the individual cogs. So typically on most bikes, you'll find the smallest cog having maybe 11 or 12 teeth on it. A lot of modern bikes are actually coming with 10 teeth on there. And then that largest cog, the easiest gear, may have something like 25 teeth on there. It could be as much as 28 teeth though, or even bigger than that. And it's that ratio between the biggest and the smallest cog that is of real interest and people mull over a lot and changes how much it jumps up in gears between the individual cogs. So if we take an example, an 1125 cassette, meaning 11 tooth smallest cog, 25 biggest, versus an 1128, the 1125 is gonna have a far smaller and incremental change up through the gears versus the 28, which might have quite sudden changes. However, that 1128 is better prepped for those challenging and tougher courses. Right then, I've established the basic mechanics of the gears up front and at the rear. Now let's drill down a little bit further and starting with the chain set up front. So typically on a road or triathlon bike, we have three options here for the double chain ring setup that I mentioned earlier. We've got the standard, which is a 53 tooth outer and 39 tooth inner, which is quite well suited to sort of the flat, the rolling, the faster kind of terrains, but still giving you enough range to get up the hills. Then we've got the semi or the mid compact, which is a 52 tooth outer and a 36 tooth inner, which is just giving you that little bit more range for those hills and the steeper climbs. But we go further again, we've got the compact chain set, which is a 50 tooth outer and a 34 tooth inner, which is really well suited to very steep, hilly and mountainous areas, which might be ideal if you live in those kind of areas. But of course, it's not just limited to those three options. There's a whole host of other options out there. They just 
tend to be the most common and most popular. There's also the option to personalize your chain set so you can easily swap out your chain rings. I actually used to have a 55 tooth outer on my triathlon race bike which is quite well suited towards those flatter faster triathlons and routes that just allowing me to have that extra and harder gear to really push on but if you are swapping any chain rings out just make sure that you're following the manufacturer's guidance and matching it with the suitable inner or outer. Equally there's a ton of smaller chain rings too, which is actually becoming increasingly more popular with there being more options for group sets. We've got 11, 12, and even 13 speed group sets coming in. Likewise, we see a similar spread of gears on the back too with the cassette. Now, traditionally on 10 and 11 speed gears, we're used to seeing ratios such as 11, 23, meaning 11 teeth on that smallest cog and 23 on the largest or 11, 25. But this range has widened considerably over the years and more often now we're used to seeing things like 11, 27, 11, 28, even as much as 11, 32. And that's increased further yet again with the introduction of things like SRAM Axis, so 12 speed, 13 speed group sets. We're seeing as much as 10, 33. It's worth pointing out though, as we go to these larger cogs and these bigger ranges, it may require a slightly different derailleur hanger that's going to allow and accommodate those larger gears. Well, by now you've probably heard me talking about gear ratios a few times in this video and wondering what on earth I'm talking about. Well, simply put, it's the ratio between the chosen front gear and the chosen rear gear. So in this instance, I'm currently in my outer chain ring and the smallest and hardest gear at the rear. So that's a 52 tooth on the front and an 11 tooth on the rear. And the ratio is 52 divided by 11. That gives me 4.72. So for every revolution, single revolution of the cranks, the rear wheel will move 4.72 times, which is quite a tough gear only really suited towards the flat and fast sort of sections of road, maybe descents, or maybe when you've got a really strong tail. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, if I went into my smallest chain ring, which is a 36 tooth, and into my easiest and largest cog at the back, which is a 28 tooth, that would give me a ratio of 1.29. So quite a significant difference to the previous. But what that means is that I'm not traveling as far for every revolution of the cranks, but it is giving me or offering me a higher cadence, which is obviously much better suited towards very steep and hilly sorts of terrain. So what are we learning from this? Well, that gear ratios are inseparably linked to the cadences at which we cycle, which to be honest, I think you all knew already. Anyone will have felt that when riding a bike and changing through the gears. But what we should take from this is just the importance of the gear ratios and that just grabbing any old bike with any old gear ratio may make a big difference on certain terrains. If you're heading off in some mountainous terrain, perhaps going on a training camp or a holiday, maybe think twice about the selection of gears that you have on your bike. Or you're coming back to training after a long hiatus or you're kitting a bike out for a friend that is just starting out cycling, you may want to be nice to them and give them a slightly easier gear ratio on their bike. Well, I hope that has been insightful and interesting for you today. If you've got any more questions, please drop them in the comment section down below. Apologies for it being so geeky, but I really hope it has helped you. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Don't forget to give us a follow over on social media to follow more from Global Triathlon Network and give us a subscribe just down below.